a PowerPoint with the speed of light, an ironic and self-mocking Hio Silver. Yes, the masked professor is on once again. Hello, ladies and germs. It is I, Harry Whiting, the lone professor in this case. And let me tell you, I feel alone. I'm in this big room by myself. So last time, I, uh, uh, I did the beginning of chapter 7. At the beginning of chapter 7, we learned some things about how to cal calculate, how do we, uh, to talk about bias, how to calculate our standard error. Today, I want to extend that by doing more exercises uh, on the computer. Okay, so I'm going to start with going way back to something that we learned uh, long ago and start with that. So this is the part where I disappear from view or maybe you'll be able to see the top of my head. Now, I have downloaded the uh, examples that they give us for uh, Chapter 7, okay? And so they give us a whole lot of data sets here uh, that we can use for our evil purposes um, or for good purposes. I mean, uh, kind of depends on what we uh, choose to do. Uh, all right. So... Um, I have uh, uh, I have got this file. I am going to put this file on our uh, on our Moodle so that you'll be able to extract that and fool around with this yourself. All right. So first, let's go through the classic problem of calculating our mean and variance. And uh, up. there we go. All right, sorry, I'm realizing I had left out a valuable, oh, bloody hell. Uh, a valuable uh, set of information uh, on this problem. Uh, all right, this one is okay. So, and let's see if we can tighten this up a bit. Uh, Okay, that's not supposed to be how it goes. Well, we'll fix that in a minute. Uh, all right, so the first thing is I have this set of data here, right? You can see it's only a few uh, pieces. And the reason that I did that is so that... Um, our table doesn't get too gigantic. Uh, all right, so uh, how do we get our sample mean, the formula for which is over here? Well, what we do is we add all these numbers up and we divide by the number of numbers. Okay, so if I just illuminate all these I can see that it is 10 numbers. Uh, so I add all of those up equals uh, the first number 23.1 plus 
second number plus third number plus fourth number plus fifth number plus sixth number plus seventh number plus eighth number plus ninth number plus tenth number. Now that's going to give me the summation of all of my numbers. And I realize you can't see that my hands are doing a lot of uh, gesticulating here. <clears throat> all right. I'm going to do that, but I forgot something important. And that is that I have to have a parenthesis here and a parenthesis here. And I want to divide all of this by 10 to get our sample mean or our average. All right, so there you go. I get our average is 21.86. That makes sense. Our lowest number is 15. Our highest number is 28. So far, so well. Now, I want to get the um, uh, the our number of our xi's minus our sample mean or x bar. Okay, so I go equals click on the 21.3 minus click on our sample mean. Hit return equals uh, click on 15.6 uh, minus 21.86 uh, equals 17.4 minus our 21.86 uh, equals our 20.1 minus 21.86 I have no doubt y'all are getting tired of me hearing uh, hearing me saying this all right, uh, equals 19.8 minus 21.6 equals 26.4 minus 21.86 equals our 25.1 minus our 21.86. Um, equals my 20.5 minus 21.86 equals my 21.9 minus my 21.86 and finally equals 28.7 minus 21.86. Now, I have these numbers that are the difference between each xi and my sample mean. Um, now, I'm going to square those. So, equals my uh, 1.24 caret that's the symbol right above your 6 on your keyboard, 2. Now, there are other ways I could do this. I could go equal power, left parenthesis, number, comma, 2, right parenthesis, Bob's your uncle. Right, but that actually takes longer then going equals negative uh, 4.46 caret 2. And I keep coming on down, clicking on my numbers, caret 2. The caret means to uh, take it to the power of in Excel language. 
equals do my caret 2. Um, and if I get bored, I can just um, click on one of the cells that's already been done, move my cursor over until there's a black cross, a black cross in the right, lower right hand corner. When I do that, I click on it and I pull it down and it's just automatically going to recopy that same uh, formula, but changing the value that it's taking for each one. All right, well, super exciting. So what am I going to do? I am going to sum my uh, quantities xi minus x bar raised to the second and divide by n minus 1. Well, as we discussed before, n equals 10. Uh, uh, so all I'm going to do is say equals sum left parenthesis uh, because I'm feeling extremely lazy uh, and don't necessarily want to do it adding each one like I did before. So that C2 through C11 are illuminated. Right uh, parenthesis division sign left parenthesis 10 minus 1 right parenthesis and I get my uh, then I get my variance from that okay well what if I want standard deviation All right, wow. I did not realize it was going to take up so much uh, uh, room when I did that. So maybe I should just go ahead and I'll go with our usual engineering abbreviation for standard, STD. Um, Right, so now I've done, I went ahead and formatted it so it's sitting right here. And what do I do to get my standard deviation? Well, it's very simple. Right up here we have our variance. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, take the square root. Now, I can do that a couple of different ways. I can go square root, uh-oh, but if I don't say equals square root, it won't do anything. Square root, left parenthesis, click on this cell, right parenthesis, and Bob's your uncle. Or I could do it the same way I did all of these, where I said equals um, our value in C12 caret 0 0.5, same answer. Or I can go equals power. Uh, left parenthesis, comma, oh, wait, number first, number, comma, 1 divided by 2, right parenthesis. So, when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, 
That's, that means there are several different ways always to do math, whether we're talking uh, doing it by hand with a calculator or on a, a, a program like Excel. All right, so I wanted to remind you of how that is done uh, before we move back into uh, chapter 7 territory. And Let me put sample mean. Okay. Pardon me, I, um, I hate it when my, uh, oh, come on. Okay, I don't know about y'all, but I feel better now, right? And of course, this is the formula uh, for our sample variance. There you go. Right, and this of course is sample standard deviation. And oh boy, I'm gonna to have to simplify it even more. If I want to uh, fit everything in the same space. All right, there we go. All right, now, this of course is how we calculate a, a, a sample mean, a sample variance, a, a sample standard deviation uh, using Excel. Uh, as you know, I always advocate, let's use Excel. All right, so speaking of let's use Excel, let's go through some problems that, uh, uh, that tap in to the knowledge of the uh, chapter seven, uh, uh, the chapter seven uh, uh, learning that you got the other day. Okay, so, we want to know our sample mean, or our X bar. All right, so I'm gonna come over here. Now, I can cheat and do it real easy and go equals average, left parenthesis. I can highlight all the numbers. And there's a lot of numbers in this one. There's 39 numbers. Yeah. And do a right parenthesis, and Bob's your uncle. I've got the uh, sample mean. Now this one is uh, this this sample because it's got thirty nine data points. We can actually take it as being equal to the mean if we wanted. All right. Well, you saw me do it with. 
uh, uh, using the average function in Excel, what if I didn't know the average function? Well, hopefully I would know equals sum, the summation uh, uh, formula, right parenthesis, although you can't see it, right parenthesis, and then what? I divide by the number of data points. So divide by 39. Again, mathematically, there are always several ways to get to the same answer. Uh, all right, now I could also go uh, equals left parenthesis um, uh, 5.47 plus uh, 5.37 plus 5.38 and do all of that until I get up to uh, uh, the 39th point. You know what? I feel too tired to do that. Forget it. All right. So, we have done that. Now, what would we do to get the sample variance, our S squared? Well, because it's Excel, it's just pretty darn easy to do. Right, we can keep in mind our ordinary um, uh, Excel formula, which would be equals VAR, and you notice it gives me some choices here. I want VARS, right, because it is a sample, it is not the whole population. Uh, all right, so equals VAR dot S. Then, once again, I just illuminate my numbers. Illuminate, illuminate, illuminate. All right, there you go. Uh, I go back up where I can see it. I uh, uh, I right click um, uh, or, or I, uh, rather I uh, uh, write parenthesis, oh, bloody hell, um, and Bob's your uncle. I've got the, uh, uh, I've got the uh, sample variance. Now, of course, if I was going to do it, um, uh, the old-fashioned way, um, um, I could go equal sum of um, uh, uh, five, uh, well, I'd have to do actually double uh, left parenthesis. A2 minus my X bar, right parenthesis, caret 2, plus left parenthesis, my A3 number, minus my X bar, right parenthesis, caret 2 plus dot 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 plus up to my very last number 4.64 oh forgot my left parenthesis minus my x bar right parenthesis caret 2 
right parenthesis divided by uh, left parenthesis n minus 1 right parenthesis. Uh, as you can see, that would be a lot of work. Okay, let me just put a uh, single quote or apostrophe to show that uh, uh, to uh, show that uh, I'm not actually make, trying to make it calculate. All right. All right, so our, our sample standard deviation, how do we get that? Well, of course, we know that's super simple. Um, we say that is equal to our standard, our, our variance raised to the one-half power Or, uh, there is also the possibility that we could copy. Uh, we could do it the old-fashioned way. Where we say we want the square root of this quantity that gave us the variance. Boy, they, that would be, uh, um, again, a long, long way to put that together. You know, learn these functions of Excel. They're very, very useful. And since you're going to be engineers, technicians, scientists, Excel is one of the most useful tools that you can know. All right, now, how do we calculate our standard error? Our standard error, as we know, is going to be our, uh, our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. All right, so equals our sample standard deviation divided by the square root quantity of n, and I'm going to hard code that because I don't have it written down anywhere. Okay, so that's a pretty small uh, uh, standard error, not too bad. Now, what if we want to, um, uh, we want to find the median. Well, what is the median? The median is the point where 50% of the data is below the median and 50% is above. So the first thing I would do, I would highlight all of my numbers all right, there we go, all highlighted. I go to data, and you may not be able to see very well. There's a little button up there uh, that says AZ with an arrow pointing downward, and that is Uh, that is the uh, uh, sort button uh, to sort from lowest to highest. Okay, so I'm going to hit that. And uh, right, and it always asks if I want to expand the selection, but if I have XI in there, what the hell good is that going to do me? So I go with continue with the current selection, sort. All right, so now we have, uh, now we have a sorted list. Now you may say to yourself, 
What good does that do me? Well, uh, the, again, the median is where 50% of the data is below that number, 50% is above. So in this case, we are going to find the, uh, uh, the exact middle. Now, if we divide 39 by 2, what do we get? We get 19 and a half. So that means that the 20th number is our median. Uh, okay, so, and that will be here, equals, right? So I can come down here and illuminate and watch my little uh, dialog box that you can see is right off to the side here. You may not be able to see, it says 20 rows and one column. Okay, so I, uh, uh, so I uh, leave it at that and I go ahead and say, all right, it's A21, that's the median. All right. Now we want to know what is the percentage of over 4.1. Uh, all right. Well, that's easy enough. That just means every number that's over 4.1, we get the number of those numbers, right? So we can see here it's from 8, uh, uh, A8 to A40, so that's 33, 33 divided by 39, right? And then, of course, I want to make that a percentage. Uh, so I come here to the percent sign, I hit that. I really want more digits than that, so I'll put a couple of digits in there by pressing the more digits button. Okay, so we got a percentage button here, we got a more digits button here. All right, so easy peasy lemon squeezy, as the old saying goes. Now, one thing I could have done here, if I wanted to be all fancy and not just really quickly, crudely uh, do it, is go equals count left parenthesis, and I could have said, all right, every number over 4.1 right? So it, it is counting how many of those there are. Right click, divide by, count, left parenthesis, and then I highlight all of my numbers. And right parenthesis, and there you go. The case is solved. All right, are there any questions? Well, of course there are, but since I'm here by myself and not with you, my class, those will have to wait. Uh, okay, but you can send me questions always by email uh, or uh, give me a call. Although giving me a call at this point may be problematic since I may or may not be here. All right, so let's just do the same thing uh, again here um, on this problem, which is another data set data set from our 
uh, Chapter 7 data set, the official data set of the 2020 Olympics. Um, all right, so how are we going to do that? We can, again, we can do the equals average left parenthesis Uh, I'll highlight all my numbers, right parenthesis. Oh, how boring. Uh, right, I can add them all up individually and divide by the uh, number. Um, so, in fact, let me do this. First of all, I'm going to do n equals... And then I'm going to go equals count left parenthesis and go down here and get uh, capture all my numbers right parenthesis. Okay, so there's 25 uh, numbers here. Uh, now. I could, uh, I could go equals uh, 2310 plus 2320 plus, oh, bloody hell, uh, that would take forever. Or I could go equals sum, left parenthesis, illuminate all my numbers, right parenthesis, and then divide by my n, right? And I'm there, um, right? Or the equals average, uh, illuminate them. It's even a little bit easier, right parenthesis. Hit enter. You know, there's always more ways to get there. Um, uh, all right. So uh, again, for my sample uh, uh, variance, I can say equals v a right, and you'll notice it always gives you a little list as long as that is a possibility. See, uh, uh, right now it's got value, uh, uh, variance of a population, variance of a sample, and uh, some other types of variance there, right? If I hit R, value drops off the list. But of course I want variance of a, a sample once again, I just illuminate uh, my numbers. I right click and boy, that is a big variance. Uh, I mean, that is a huge variance. Uh, you may think you know variances. Uh, all right. But I actually want I would like to see the actual number, right? A variance of 11,699,489 Yow is all I can say. All right. Once again, with standard deviation, I could say equal square root, left parenthesis, uh, hit the uh, uh, sample variance number, 
I could equal, hit the uh, uh, sa uh, sample variance number, caret um, uh, 0 0.5, Okay. <coughs> right, so you can see there are, there's always a variety of ways. Sample variance, we could do that the mathematical way as I showed you last, uh, with the last, um, uh, with the last uh, problem, eh, the problem is it takes a long time to do it. And I'm too lazy uh, to really want to do it that way. All right, well, standard error, super simple, equals our sample standard uh, deviation, divide by the square root of our uh, uh, sample size, right parenthesis. <coughs> uh, so that is a really big standard error compared to uh, compared to our x bar. So that probably means. This may not be the best sample that we could get. There's a, a standard error of 684.09, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, means that um, this, it, uh, this estimate is considerably biased. Um, so, uh, all right, our median, once again, is very easy. 50% of the data is below the median, 50% is above. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to order my data. All right, data, stand to attention. Oh, wait, not that kind of an order. Uh, I'm going to go to data. I am going to come here to the sort function. Uh, I'm going to choose sort smallest to largest. There's no reason we couldn't do largest to smallest. The same idea would apply. Uh, again, it wants me to expand the selection, but right here is a zero, and I don't want to get that involved, right? So I say continue with our current selection. There you go. Bob's your uncle. Now, To find our uh, oh, wrong one, that's the one I want. All right, so to find our median, right, it will be at equals n divided by 2. Well, n divided by 2 is... Uh, 12 and a half, and it has to be a whole number, so I'm going to say approximately 13. Oh, wait, that's the wrong symbol. There you go. So approximately 13. The 13th number is going to be a14 here 
because A1 isn't being used. All right, so my median is the number in A14. And there you go. Now, the percent over 4.1, well, it's 100% because our lowest number is 2010. All right, but let's make it a little more interesting and say uh, the percentage that's over 5,000. All right. Well, we know already that if we go equals count left parenthesis and then we just highlight all the numbers that are bigger than 5,000, right parenthesis, uh, divided by, we don't need to do count again because we already have our n, So it looks like it's 36%. Uh, I'm just going to call it 36%. Uh, and there you go. Right? Again, there's nothing magic about this. This is something that you can all learn. And, in fact... If you're going to be a student in the sciences, if you're going to be a scientist, a technician, or an engineer, then damn it, you need to learn it already. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I got a little carried away there. Um, all right, let's go through one more example, and then I'll end the uh, torture that is this video. All right, so here I've got another example of data. And um, and first of all, we want our sample mean. Our sample mean is just a fancy word for the average of all the numbers in our sample. So we say equals E-A-V-E-R-A-G-E -E -E and go left parenthesis, come down here, Bob's your uncle, right parenthesis, hit enter, and I have my average. Right, again, I could do equals sum, left parenthesis, illuminate my numbers. You notice the highest one is A27. That's going to be significant because that means I divide by 26. Right, in fact, I'm going to go n equals equals count right now this could make a huge difference obviously we're dealing with fairly small data sets so they're pretty easy for you all to work with imagine if you had hundreds or even thousands, or even tens of thousands of data points. Um, when I was working at the Center for Automatic Identification in, uh, uh, at Ohio University, they actually wanted all their data sets to be 20,000 points. Oy vey. Um, now, maybe you feel excited and would like to um, um, 
would like to go through 20,000 uh, points by hand, that is certainly not where I'm coming from. In fact, at the time, I would uh, use SQL to trim if we had 20,060 uh, data points. I would trim that last 60 off. Uh, why uh, uh, Dr. Barrisso insisted that it had to be exactly 20,000, I don't know. Uh, I mean, that certainly gives you a situation where you're likely to be in the normal distribution territory, but it just seems excessive to me. But I digress. So, again, we want our variance, and our variance is equals VAR dot S left parenthesis highlight all my numbers. By now I actually remember what, uh, what the cells are and could have just put that in directly. All right, so 2.73, that's pretty good. And let's see what our standard deviation is. I'm going to do the square root. First of all, SQRT is the function, left parenthesis, D4, right parenthesis. There you go. Again, I could do it power, my number, comma, 0 0.5 as my uh, uh, as the number to raise that to. All right, our standard error. Standard error is always um, is always our standard deviation divided by the square root of n. All right, so equals standard deviation divided by the uh, square root, I'll just go ahead and use the square root function of n. 26 will be a little tiny bit over 25 as the square root. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, again, we always need to be thinking about what is our, uh, uh, what is our median. Knowing how to locate those quartiles is kind of an important uh, situation. All right, so once again, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to sort my numbers into order. Once again, I am really hoping you guys are making the connection of how easy this is to do with Excel and how hard it would be to do it just by hand. All right, so I'm going to sort smallest to largest. I'm not going to expand the selection. I've chosen the exact numbers I want. Continue with current selection. Sort. Right. Now, I want to look and say, what is n divided by 2 equal to? Well, n divided by 2 equals my n, 26, divided by 2. All right, that means that it's going to be kind of awkward because if it were like the last problem or the first problem, 
uh, where we did this kind of exercise, we could just take the very middle number. Now, with 13 out of 26, that means we have to average, we have to average our 13th number, okay, uh, so that would be um, A14, um, plus, oh, plus A15, right, um, right parenthesis, divide by 2, and of course, I had forgotten to put a left parenthesis at the beginning. Right? So, uh, so to get our median, we're going to say, all right, equals, um, I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way, uh, a14 plus A15, right parenthesis, divide by 2. So our median is 75 and a half. Or 75.2, excuse me. Ugh, bloody hell. My dyslexia is kicking up. Uh, all right, and again, I could have done that as equal average... Um, uh, highlight 14 and 15, write parenthesis, divide by 2. Huh, okay, something wrong there. Oh, excuse me, I should have put sum. Or, yeah, sum is right. Or just e equals average. A14, A15. All right. You know, there's, uh, you know, again, there's always alternate paths to get to our destination. All right. So 79 and 72. So let's do the percentage over... Uh, actually, let's do the percentage under 73. All right. Once again, we can do that easily enough with the count function equals count left parenthesis. Uh, go up and hit our sole. Uh, uh, number that is under 73. Apparently I chose too low a number. And then divide that by our N and go ahead and turn that into a percentage, do a couple more decimal places and call it a day. Okay, so, again, there's nothing magic about this. This is not only something every one of you can do, but it's something that every one of you needs to learn to do. Um, so, uh, shall we do another, uh, um, uh, another problem? Well, I'm not hearing any of you say no. Uh, all right. Once more, N 
equals, and I'm going to go ahead and do this right up front, count, left parenthesis, uh-oh, forgot my equals, somewhere that was lost along the way. There's been a rift within the lute, which growing larger makes the music mute, as the poet reminds us. Uh, okay, I illuminate all my numbers, right parenthesis, hit enter, it's 24 numbers. Um, and I go up here, I want my sample mean, um, just for variety I'm going to say equals sum, left parenthesis, Highlight all my numbers, right parenthesis, divide by 24, or n, as the case may be. Um, all right, so easy peasy. Uh, again, we could do equals average left parenthesis, highlight my numbers, right parenthesis, hit enter. Um, uh, you know, again, I could do equals left parenthesis and put each number in, adding together, but oh my God, for 24 numbers, that seems like way too much work. Now, for uh, uh, for my variance, I am going to go ahead and say uh, equals V A R. Right, I choose not V A R dot P, which would be for a whole population. I choose. VAR dot S because we want the variance of a sample. All right, again, I just highlight all my numbers. Um, uh, do a right parenthesis, hit enter. Now I've got my variance. My uh, standard, a sampled standard deviation is the square root of this, and obviously it's going to be a little bit over 9. So equals SQRT, square root, left parenthesis, uh, click on the cell containing the variance, right parenthesis, and there you go. And what is our standard error? Uh, our standard error is our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Okay, so equals standard uh, sample standard deviation divided by square root left parenthesis n right parenthesis hmm that is an interesting question um, 1.7 Oh, I missed by a mile. I'm so disappointed. Um, all right. Once again, let's do median. Um, by now you should know we illuminate all the numbers we go to data, we go to the little button A to Z with an arrow down, 
We don't want to expand the selection. And we sort them into numerical order. All right, now we've got 24 data points. All right, so that means that n divided by 2 equals equals our n divided by 2 all right well once again that means that we're going to have to do an average to get the median right because it's going to be halfway between 423 and 425 well, of course, you could probably do that in your head. Equals average. But for the sake of form, I'll go ahead and write it out. Equals the average left parenthesis, A23, A24, right parenthesis, Bob's your uncle, 424. Who would have thought that was between 423 and 425? Uh, all right, so uh, let's do every number over 413. All right, well, we say that's equal to the count, and we just look, and by inspection we say, these numbers are all above 413, right? Come back up here, right parenthesis, divide by n, or yes, divide by n, sorry. Lost my mind for a moment. Oh, it's exciting getting old. All right, so we got 79% are above uh, 413. All right, and uh, again, we could have figured that out various ways. But here's a question. What if we wanted the first quartile and the third quartile. Oh. All right, so what are the first and third quartiles? The first quartile is the place where 25% of the data is below that number and 75% of the data is above. And the third quartile is where 75% of the data is below the third quartile and 25% is above. All right, well, we already know n divided by 2 equals 12, but now we want to know what is n divided by 4 equal to. All right, well, that's easy enough. Equals n divided by 4 is 6. Now, if it had come out to be an odd number, we could just find that number and Bob's your uncle, we'd be there. But no, no, the horror. Uh, all right, so with 6, that means 
that between six and seven is where our first quartile is. Or excuse me, I made a mistake, between seven and eight. Well, between seven and eight, what is the average of 416 and 416? It's obviously 416. So I'm just going to say equals, click on one of my 416s, Bob's your uncle, we're done. Now, the next question, though, becomes, where is our third quartile? Well, in this case, I would count up six so that I would know that my third quartile is, be is between 431 and 431. Duh! <laughs> I think we know what the average of 431 and 431 is. It's 431! And thus, we have calculated our first quartile and our third quartile, right? And we could uh, fool around with that more and go insert, uh, I'm looking for charts, uh, where is my box plot, uh, all charts, uh, there we go, box and whisker. Uh, okay, and uh, all I'm going to do is go here, select data, edit series one, I'm just going to call it unknown data. Yes, out of mathematics into the past. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. All right, sorry. Probably none of y'all saw the Lone Ranger show uh, when you were kids. And, okay. All right, what is this supposed to be? Oh, okay, I see. Edit. equals. Oh, okay. Well, hmm. what's going on there, Ketchton? All right. This time for sure. Yes, yes. We're, we've got our parentheses and arguments. <sighs> All right. Oh, I forgot. You shouldn't use equal if you're not referring to um, uh, there we go. Oh, they're really going to make me, um, oh, I know, equals, and let's go up here and accept that it won't show anything because that's a formula, 
So I'll put in xi by hand. Oh, okay. Again, I put in the equal sign even though that's not necessary. Um, all right. Oh, such a bloody pain in the butt. All right, this time for sure. All right, well, I'm I'm rapidly running out of patience and time for this class. So I'm going to end this before I put my fist through the computer screen in frustration. Um, let me move that over a little bit. Okay, and there you go. All right, so anyway, uh, bloody hell. Um, one of the things about uh, Excel is it's pretty easy and intuitive to use. So you can, um, when you forget, as you notice I did just now, some of the things about how to make a chart, if you just fool around with it for a while, you're able to find, uh, uh, find out how to do it. In fact, that's mostly how I learned Excel in the first place. All right. Well, uh, it's time to sign off. And if I can mix my metaphors, happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you, keep smiling until then.